And by when I say I will get it welded on, I mean, I've got tabs and I'll find somebody who knows how to weld because I weld like a toddler. From Mooresville, Indiana, he drives the Daystar Directional Drilling, Edco General Contractors, Collision Concepts, BooyahDarts.com 35, it's Zach Hampton. So next, we're going to put on shocks before we do body or anything like that. So left ears are always going to have this cup, right? And that's a slot I actually put in. But then you've got, like, you can, your little rubber. I don't have a bump rubber on this thing right now, but this little rubber thing kind of tells you how much the shock's moving. And then your, your, your bump rubber and shims, whatever, go above this. And the reason you run those, it's not to keep it in. I mean, it is, but it's so that people can't see what you've got for gap. So. I think probably one or two people did that. And then um, it probably became cool. Ollie, get back. Get back, Bubba. All right, so this left rear shock, depending on your shock and how much like body and shaft you have, I'm gonna double check, but yeah, I didn't think mine, could reach on this on this particular shock. So this is a shorter shock. So when it's on a block like this, you can't have the shock on. So what is put actually it'll be better if I put the top on. And then when we set the car on the ground, I can actually put the bottom part on. So if your shock is like that, just be careful when you do put this thing on setup blocks and go to turn weight and all that, you gotta make sure your shock's unhooked. Otherwise the axle won't actually be sitting on your block. It'll just be sitting or it'll be dangling from your shock. All right, so right rear. This is just a rebound adjustable. My main, like, so there's more of a spare and it's got slightly different numbers, but my main right rear shock, as you can see, there's two knobs versus the one, so I can adjust rebound and compression. So there's also a good chance the left rear is not gonna reach, or left front is not gonna reach either. So this one does, I gotta grab a couple nuts. I've got some left fronts that do, some left fronts that don't, just like my left rear that reach. This one does, which means I just have a longer shaft. I probably have an eight instead of a seven. I'd have to look at my sh sheet on this exact shock to know. Right, so as you can see, if you notice, all my knobs always face back and that's so that dirt doesn't hit them and break them off or damage them or turn them while you're racing. And then all the shock covers, obviously. You don't wanna be the guy who accidentally puts it on backwards like I do all the time, not paying attention. And then someone comes up and tells you that you're a dumbass. There's all the shocks. Now we can do body panels. So I'm gonna go grab the corresponding ones off the wall. So I'll just kind of show you guys, I guess. I think I kind of did, but I just have long drywall screws in, or wood screws. And then I hang each body from them and it allows me to keep them nice and neat, organized. So we'll do our left side here first 
set that there for a moment. So the Knoxville mufflers here make this one extremely difficult just because it's so much thicker than if it was a straight pipe. If you're running mufflers or even if you're not, when I'm thinking more and not, you know, like once I'm kind of in the season and in the groove of things, I'm putting these on before I put my headers on. Like I'll put all the lowers on and then I put headers on and then I put the upper body on. But clearly, I wasn't thinking. So there's our left side. Well, actually let's go ahead and grab so I used to run the full left side panel on this car. So I don't have the tabs, all the tabs. Like I don't have that tab and I need to weld it on. I just, I haven't yet. So I'm not necessarily a huge fan of it, but as you can see, I drilled those two holes and those are going to get zipped. That's going to get zip tied. So I'll probably end up getting this tab welded on before like the season starts once I get out to Knoxville and gets the thing back unloaded into the shop I'll be on out there. I will uh and by when I say I will get it welded on, I mean I've got tabs and I'll find somebody who knows how to weld. Because I weld like a toddler. That was dangerous. And I'll weld that on so I don't have to zip tie it. Zip tie is definitely not the right thing for that. So if you're wondering what like this hole and then the one on the other side is for, my belt actually bolts there. The stand is kind of in the way. So I'm just gonna take I'll have to lift up on the axle to get it back in because there's tension on this when you're not on a six inch block. Maybe just getting that out of the way is enough. Yeah, there we go. So normally, my stand's normally further back when I'm not building a car, but when you're doing the torque tube and all that, you kind of move the stand forward and that's why that's in the way. All right, so there's all the lowers. So the next thing we can do is this right side arm guard. It actually slips behind here. So we take these two Zeus buttons out. So I'll probably have to, to get that one in. I'm gonna have to drill a new hole since this was on the other car before, but because it's a used one, I want to move it to this. And I may not use this thing at all just because that's so bad right there. I've got some more. I just hate to put a new one on if I don't need to. So this will probably ride on the spare. And then if we move to it, then after the first night, I'll, I'll put a new one on. So next is the hood. They can be a bit of a pain. So I actually took these Zeus's out earlier. We're going to just set that up because the hood kind of slides under. So these aren't the most fun things to put on by your, yourself, especially if you have a fiberglass because they start to like sprawl out. 
Right, it is what it is. So I like to put my top one in first. There's our body. Next step is going to be wheels and tires, and then we'll be able to set this thing down. So we'll just go ahead and start with the right rear here. So I keep all my spacers, you know, like together. So I already know this is the right amount of them and whatnot. So I'll show you a couple things with the spacers I run. The first thing, so like this is just a half inch spacer. It was black, but that's the first thing that goes on. So there's a little bit of, let me lower you guys a bit. Right, you can see where there's still some like of the silver showing. And that's actually a little bit bigger round than this. And this is bigger round than that, right? So that goes on first to make sure that the birdcage gets tight. And then this is the only threaded one I use. And it's just, I never go in further than that. So like on the right rear, you know, other than when I take them off for maintenance, those are always there. So I run the MPD spacer kit. Some guys, like all their spacers are threaded. And then, like, when you move the right rear in or out, right, then you need these on the inside. And so they end up, like, they have cones, right? And they're threaded, like, or, you know, that threaded that way, not threaded on here. And so, like, if you take a half inch out of here and put it on the outside, then you need a different cone. So you got to have, like, 20 cones or whatever, right? So I run this MPD spacer kit, and what it is is, like, You've got this, which is for, right, like your your nut. And then this goes into the hub of the wheel, right? So if I take one out of here to move the right rear end, right, say all these are here, the wheel's on, and we're here, and I want to move the right rear end, well, let's just say a quarter because that's on the edge. Instead of like most guys, they take this off and then they get a bigger cone here so that this doesn't thread onto the, try to thread onto the axle. I just take that off and I slip it in out here. So it's basically my cone's adjustable, right? So these are really cool, but they're not, you know, threaded. They're just bigger. So that MPD makes that kit. It's, it's really, it makes it so much easier. I mean, there's old school guys that are still on like the cones and whatever BS. But this is so much easier, simple, and like all your spacers are labeled. So like MPD half, MPD quarter. So a lot of guys, like old school guys or like old school, old washers or spacers there, like they won't have any writing on them. So you're either guessing or you just know by looking or or you have to get a tape measure out. So one thing you should always do. So it's going to be really hard to tell. I don't think I can turn like a flashlight on while I do this. Maybe I can zoom in from here. So right here is a hole and that's where our bleeder goes. You should always line up, like I'm always centered on my bleeders like that so that they always, your bleeders always line up in the same place. And I know some other guys who do it, but I also might just be OCD. So I also have to line up the Hoosier logo like with my valve stems and stuff. And then like when the car comes in, I'll jack up the car and I'll rotate all the tires so that like the Hoosier is straight up and down front and rear. Probably overkill, but. And then we can't get fully tight here, right? But we can just. 
get it snug. Not that I need to, but I guess it's just habit for me. Like a tire goes on and gets snugged up, and then when it goes on the ground, you tighten it. So now we can do our left rear. Same thing on this side, we've got the like sanded down one that goes on first, right? And then I run a gold one of these, just like on the right rear, but it's black on the right rear, left rears are gold. So one other thing I wanted to mention, cause you can see, right, that my nuts, will free spin like really, really nice. And they're not like that. Like when you get the nut and a new, like a new axle, new nut is gonna be, you're gonna hear it squeak and whatnot. So dry graphite, you just like sprinkle it on and then I'll rotate it and sprinkle it, rotate it, sprinkle it and kind of get it covered. And then I'll sprinkle some into the end of the nut. And then I just, you know, 10, 15, 20 times, however long it takes, work it back and forth and back and forth. And that's something that, like if, if I end up spraying a lot off on accident, like at the car wash, whatever, like I, I put more on every week. So that'll save you a headache, especially in the work area. 10 seconds can be the difference between you getting back on the track and or not. So I can actually show you guys now. That's the little hole I was talking about on the other side. So you can see this tire isn't orientated, right? Like the Hoosier logo. And that's because I'm going to throw Ayrton under the bus. He didn't give a, a shit <laughs> about it, especially if he was in a hurry last year to get these mounted or whatever so obviously if we're in a hurry i'd rather get on than get on right as far as the logo goes it doesn't really matter i want to show you guys our our rear wheels have these two i'll just show you with my hand i'm not grabbing a tape measure but as you can see if i touch the wheel center like with point of my finger on this, I'm like one hand, right? This is a three off and this is the left front. Three off is really standard on the left front, but most guys run a four off on the right front. And as you can see how much more my hand is out, this is a five off. So I run a three on the left front and a five on the right front. I would say the most common by far is three and four. But when I didn't know anything and like I bought my first car as a roller, well, really, it was the one I got from Kane. It came with a three and five, and that's kind of what I got used to driving. And so as I started to get more and more stuff and, you know, like build my program, I just stuck with those offsets. So there's other guys who are on them. I mean, there's guys who even have a six off right front that they might put on from time to time, but. If you were looking, if you were, if someone's watching that's looking to get into sprint car racing, I would say get a three and four off because that's, that's your most standard. Whatever you do get, I don't, I mean, it definitely makes a difference. I don't want to say I don't think it makes a difference, but you can make either one work. So just whatever you do get, like if you have a three off on your left front already and you're going to get a new, another wheel or a new wheel stay with the three off and right front, like four or five off, whatever you've got, just keep your stuff the same. 90% of this is just consistency. You can make any anything work or almost anything I should say. So we get both of these started. So you can see on this wheel, it's got these ears and I can't actually put a mud cover on unless I get the bolt things, which I won't. So I don't actually use these, but that's so that you can put a mud cover on. You want, you don't ever run mud covers on the left side. Well, I guess I say that 
this is my only set of non beadlock fronts. So there's not like a bolt on beadlock. All my beadlock fronts, so my other three sets of fronts, the left front, I run mud covers. But really, it's just because they look cool. They don't really serve a purpose. You're never going to pack your, well, I guess I shouldn't say never, but it would be a, an extreme rarity to pack your left front with mud. Usually, it's your right rear and some guys you're right front if you've got a bead lock if you're on non bead locks it's not a big deal because it usually will fall off especially if you've got some like mud off or or whatever you use uh, baby oil wd-40 to help keep help make the mud just fall off instead of having to scrape it so we can grab our 916 on the impact So these will get torqued at 25, but I don't ever torque them until I'm actually like at the track and unload. And these non bead locks, I usually only run them at half miles. My bead lock stuff, I run at quarters and three eighths. These weigh less, so rotating weight, yada, yada, whatever is you know say not crucial but it helps so i'll grab the jack we can set this on the ground and get a wing so we're going to put this left rear shock on real quick since we had to leave it off until we got it on the ground. All right, so we can do the wing next. We've got our T-post here. So all mine are labeled because like your nose wing, you've got those notches, so I've labeled mine right and left. All my sets are like that. And most of them, I have them like drilled on the other, the back side as well. So that they can go on either side. So we've got our post in, that one's kind of hard to see. The next thing will be the top wing tree. The feet, so the wing tree will slide into this. You'll see when we put the wing on. We've got those in. Next, I'm gonna roll this car just a little bit out of the way so I can get that wing in back here. And you guys can laugh as I look like an idiot getting this wing on. So you guys are about to see why. I'm very happy I don't have powder coated wings anymore because having to do this alone will scratch the bottom but it kind of is what it is most of the time i don't
All right, so I'm going to show you guys what I was kind of messing with there. The reason I took the feet off a couple times and whatnot is my tabs are a little bit off on like every car for some reason, just a bit, you know, like you can almost see that it's a little bit bent out. So you can see I added a couple spacers in there and I was just trying to get the spacing right so that like they're angled properly and evenly spaced. So that's what I was doing there. But now what we can do is get our digital level. And I'm more than good, right? So really, I'll probably end up, I'm in my third hole here, and I don't think I'm usually that low. So that's usually up a little bit. And this might end up moving back. Not something I'm going to mess with right now. But I know that I'm never going to go under 21.5, which is where we're at. Most nights, I'll probably start around like 23 even at a place like Knoxville. So when I kind of get all of my wing trees right on all the cars and whatnot, I'll find, you know, my happy medium. And really at a place like Knoxville, I still got to play some. So that's why it looks like Lance Deweese is driving this thing. The wing is flat. So it'll be a little bit more back when I move my wing slider and whatnot. But yeah, obviously I've still got stickers to do. You know, there's a couple on there, but like all the, the side stickers were just super wore out. So even if they go on this used body, I'm gonna at least do new stickers. I'm gonna stick with, you know, like the really pl plain stuff that I've been doing, you know, not really any graphics, just some stickers, but that is for the most part, other than the couple things that, you know, like we talked about that I maybe couldn't show you, or I was still waiting on getting parts back, you know, in the seat, you know, that's how I build. My cars, at least for the most part, I don't usually make as many mistakes or do things in the wrong order. But trying to like plan this out and talk about it while I work is kind of new. You know, usually I just, you know, I could have probably done this in six hours, but it probably took me, you know, 20 to kind of lay stuff out and prepare and try to figure out how I'm going to explain things or talk my way through it. Cause normally for me, it's just, you know, do it. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing this. I hope, you know, I think the, the video will turn out really good. Justin's really good at what he does. So hopefully I didn't make it too difficult. I've got a bunch of like clippings and, you know, I've done it in parts so that I could save the video. And at one point I lost footage. I lost like an hour more of footage so like I had to take stuff back apart and then redo it for you guys so yeah I mean I I definitely enjoyed it I had to build this car anyways you know it just ended up taking me longer than normal yeah but leave comments I actually wrote a few things down that I didn't want to forget yeah I, I meant to also say like if you guys liked this and want to see me start making more content, like even past, like more content like this and not just, you know, a time lapse here and there, comment and uh, let me know. And if you have any ideas of stuff you'd want to see, you know, we could do some maintenance videos later this year, you know, on the weeks where I've got time. If there's anything that I, you feel like I didn't explain well enough or you still have questions on and like, even if you're just, you know, a fan, right? I think um, there's probably more people who don't know how to build a sprint car that are going to watch this video than the guys that do. So if you're curious, I'll kind of check the comments on Justin's YouTube stuff. And, you know, maybe if we get a bunch and there's, you know, good comments, maybe maybe we film like a whatever Q&A video down the line after everything comes out. So if you want to support me, 
Justin's going to attach my Shopify, like my online merchandise store. He's going to put that in the description of all the videos. And I'll have him put my Twitter, my handle. That's what I, that's really the only social media I really use. If you add me on Facebook, I'll probably add you back at some point, but like I don't get on there and post. So yeah, and then it'll probably be at the beginning too, but comment on every video, anything. I mean, whether it's, you know, your favorite part or something that you thought was interesting or whatever. And But yeah, if you, you know, watched and enjoyed, or I guess even if you didn't enjoy, you know, thanks for watching. Um, I hope the video does good. So yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I might do some more stuff this summer. I'm going to be really busy working on the team DGRD stuff during the week. And then um, as well as my stuff kind of in the evenings or when I have time. And then I'll be racing Knoxville every Saturday or, you know, every night that they have a race, I'll be at Knoxville. And then hopefully I can fit in some other races when I have time and money. So my, my team's been mostly, I'd say like 75, 80% family funded um, the last two, three years, but I'm, I'm at the point where I feel like if I can't, you know, make it on my own, then I probably shouldn't be doing it. So I'm only racing on what I can afford to with, you know, whatever money I make, which isn't a lot and sponsors. So hopefully I get to make it some more races, but right now I'm unsure. I'll just kind of have to see how the season goes. And, you know, like if I don't tear stuff up, then I'll have more money to race and see if we pick up any more help along the way. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.